always by saying good morning football to everyone out there watching our show today presented by Bolt 24. We're in New York. The family is all together and all together we are mourning a huge loss that transcends the sports world. Uh, we lost a global icon and legend. We start with the news that shook the sports world. Kobe Bryant, along with his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, were among nine people who lost their lives in a helicopter accident in Calabasas, California on Sunday. Kobe played his entire 20-year NBA career with the Los Angeles Lakers, was a five-time NBA champion, two-time finals MVP. Kobe Bryant was 41 years old. The NFL released a statement which read in part, Kobe was an extraordinary athlete who thrilled and entertained sports fans around the world for a generation. Our thoughts are with the Bryant family, Kobe fans, his teammates, the Lakers organization, and the NBA. Kobe Bryant grew up in Philadelphia after time overseas. He went to Lower Marion High School. He was an avid Eagles fan. The Eagles released a statement as well, which read in part, quote, he was a champion for the ages, a fearless competitor, and an outstanding ambassador for the city. Our hearts go out to all of today's victims and their families. Kyle, it was a normal Sunday, just turned into something where we will always forget where we were and what we felt. Yeah. The four of us have the burden this morning of being really excited for Super Bowl week and yet completely gut punched by this news. It's good morning football, but if you watch the show, you know we love basketball. We love all sports. We reference it all the time. Yep. Around noon yesterday, I got a text from my little brother, and all it said was, oh, my God, Kobe. And I thought, what did Kobe say? What did Kobe do? Is he making a comeback? I had no idea. And then you go to Twitter, and you're just absolutely gut-punched. This is a sickening story, not only for anyone who is a fan of sports, but anyone with a family, with a mother, with a daughter, with a son, with a father. Uh, our hearts go out to all the families of the victims, mm -hmm. and especially people this morning in Los Angeles and Philadelphia for whom Kobe Bryant was like a son. It's a terrible day. We talk about this all throughout the day, an outpouring of, of respect and prayers, and we're all mourning here with heavy hearts. And as we do that, we do have to do our job and focus on what's going on as we kick off Super Bowl week. So we will talk football. It's what we do best. Let's head to Miami. The Chiefs and Niners uh, were there. They arrived at the uh, Miami International Airport yesterday ahead of Super Bowl 54. We've got you covered. Tommy Bahama shirts and all on all things Niners and Chiefs all week long right here on NFL Network. Let's welcome in and say GMFB. Good morning football to Stacey Dales. She's at the Niners Hotel. James Palmer in Miami at the Chiefs Hotel. James, uh, we'll go to you for a report on the Chiefs in just a minute, but let's start with Stacey and the Niners. Stacey, set the scene for what uh, the NFC champions have on their schedule just today. Well, good morning, Kay. And, and just to reflect on what you guys just talked about, it, it was a difficult day as the both teams arrived, and it was the Kansas City Chiefs first, given the Kobe Bryant news. Heavy hearts for all of us, our condolences to their family. Uh, just a tragic situation in which all of the players were tweeting about. So uh, certainly it was a, a difficult day on really a bright day. And for the San Francisco 49ers, they arrived uh, excited about the Super Bowl with a team that still believes, Kay, and, and you guys that People think they're pretenders. This is a 15-win football team as we get ready to set the stage here with opening night at the Super Bowl. And you see Emmanuel Sanders right here and some of the other you know, teammates there, Debo Samuel, the rookie who's had an outstanding season. And I talked to Raheem Mostert, and he talked to me about just the fact that we really still feel like the underdogs, and that's remarkable. I will tell you that this team, back in week 13, they played the Ravens. Kyle Shanahan, their coach, opted to keep them on the East Coast, so they stayed here in Florida getting ready for their New Orleans game. And Raheem Mostert told me uh, of that week, you could feel that we were going to head back to Florida, and they find themselves here right now. For more now on the Kansas City Chiefs, to my teammate, James Palmer. Well, thanks, Stacey. I'm up here in Ventura, which the Chiefs are staying at their hotel at the Turnberry Resort. We're about 30 minutes north of Miami. They're going to be spending the week really outside, secluded at this resort from all of the hoopla that surrounds the Super Bowl and everything that surrounds the city that is hosting the Super Bowl. Now, they do have practice this afternoon at the Dolphins facility. They have 100% of their game plan in, but Andy Reid will start tweaking things as they go through this week. And also, he's tweaked the schedule a little bit from 
the last time he was in the Super Bowl in 2004, learned a couple of things from that trip with the Eagles. As they spend their entire time here, they'll also be having all of their meetings at the resort. Everything will be going on here in this massive complex that I kind of wish, guys, I was spending some more time in. But we'll be here this entire week. They've been preparing for the heat. They haven't played really a warm weather game since maybe that Mexico City game. So Andy Reid's been giving these guys some extra time and preaching to them about making sure they stay in the proper conditions to play in a climate they really haven't played a whole lot of games in lately. James, are you prepared for the heat? I know the hair and cold conditions is no problem, but I mean, it's humid down there. It's hot. Yeah. Good question. It is. It has survived the cold and it will survive the heat. Yes. Hey. Wow. Great job by you, Stacey Dales. Excellent reporting as well. We'll be talking to you all throughout the show, all throughout the week as you guys get those base tans going before mm -hmm. we join you on Wednesday <laughs> night. Back here right. at the breakfast table, we've got to talk about some quarterbacks because it's Jimmy Garoppolo and Patrick yeah. Holmes. Those are the two to stack up. Listen, the two have nearly identical completion percentages. Mahomes has double the amount of touchdowns as Jimmy G. Here's my question. Whose career would benefit more from a win in Miami in Super Bowl 54, Jimmy Garoppolo or Patrick Mahomes? Go first on this one. I, Go on. I think 50 years can't be overestimated this week. Hmm. Like we can't talk about enough. 50 years what the Chiefs have been waiting and their fan base have been waiting for a Patrick Mahomes team or any team to win a Super Bowl. But I look at Mahomes specifically in that market. You're an icon. You are Mr. Kansas City. You bring a Super Bowl back down to Kansas City. To me, that puts you in a different level with your city. It's almost Drew Brees to New Orleans or Ray Lewis to Baltimore. You're in that conversation. But I also would say this about Mahomes. You're off to this rocket start. We talked about this last week week. Dan Marino got there in his second year, never got back. Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson won one in his second year, never got back. Kaepernick got there, mm -hmm. third year, never got back. Even last year, Jared Goff gets there, and you're like, well, the Rams are so young, they'll get... To me, it's like Mahomes, lightning in a bottle, Now, strike now. Don't leave this up for chance. You could be one of the all-time greatest quarterbacks. Check that box, get it out of the way, get that Super Bowl ring so that it's not always hanging over your head. I think Patrick Mahomes... They have not had as good a Chiefs team. They have not had a good Chiefs opportunity to win a Super Bowl in 50 years. Go get it done, and you are an icon, not only in that mm. city, but overall. Yeah, you're right about that. I mean, we're mourning the loss of Kobe, and he was a global icon because he was a champion. People love champions. And when it comes to Pat Mahomes, if you go ahead and do this this early in your career, people are going to respect you for the guy who snatched the torch from every living legend that we've had in this league, and now all of a sudden the NFL is yours at the quarterback position. But for me, it's a little bit different. It's not just about the stature and how we're going to proceed Pat Mahomes, it's about him resetting the market financially. I'm talking about contractually. What's going to happen if Pat Mahomes has a Super Bowl ring? And then he goes to KC and he's like, hey, so you want to cut this deal, keep me around for a lifetime? Because I can do everything that every other quarterback can do. You want to talk about prolific passing? Oh, yeah, I can do that. If you want to talk about a guy that's athletic, that can extend the pocket and run for touchdowns, I can do that. You want to talk about intelligence, just traditional drop back quarterback mm -hmm. play? I can do that. You want to talk about playground football? <laughs> I also can do that, which means Russell Wilson's contract where he got the extension, the four-year deal for $35 million per, and we're all like, whoa, Russell Wilson, who's worth every dollar. Mm -hmm. I think Pat Mahomes can literally go to KC and say, well, how about we just do a, a smooth five-year, mm -hmm. $200 million contract? 40 mil. 40 million. First one ever. And I don't think there is a person that can argue with me when you watch Pat Mahomes play and we talk about his efficiency, not only in the regular season, but we talked about it last week in the postseason as well, that you're going to argue $40 million for Pat Mahomes. You're like, you know what? Go ahead and sign it. Sign it on the dotted line because he's worth every penny. But first, you got to win a Super Bowl. If he doesn't, yeah, you'll get a little bit more than Russ, maybe 36. But you can ask for 40 if you get you a think, ring. You think so? If you can, is that fair? 40 for a I ring? I think there's a name your price factor. If you bring a Super Bowl back to Kansas City, like you're that. the MVP. I think he's gonna get. He's gonna break the market regardless. No doubt. But it is one of those blank check deals. Like, okay, whatever you want at this point. I know we want to negotiate and be tough as a team. I'm the guy who did this. Yeah. Mahomes, Mahomes loses the Super Bowl 31 to 27. He's still naming his price, guys. I mean, he's he's gonna get whatever he wants. The question is the biggest jump. Patrick Mahomes is already the Madden cover guy. Patrick Mahomes is in insurance commercials with Aaron Rodgers. Jimmy Garoppolo, I don't think most of the country knows who he is. I, honestly, I, I, I look at this as uh, the Aunt Patty factor. Aunt Patty lives in middle America, only knows the major, major star. I don't think she knows Jimmy Garoppolo. I know this. 
Autocorrect doesn't know Jimmy Garoppolo. I've been wrestling with that one for weeks. Yeah. They have a better job spelling use check. Peter, look at me right now. Spell Garoppolo. Don't look at the screen. Look at me. There's two P's. G A R A P. Wrong. It's G A R O. P P O L O. You spelled Garofolo. It's very close. <laughs> Listen, Jimmy Garoppolo, you want to talk about the Chiefs history? If you win the quarterback at the Super Bowl as a quarterback of the Niners, you're a Rockefeller. You're a Carnegie. You're Montana. You're young. This is going to be a massive coming out party. The second Jimmy Garoppolo says, I'm going to Disney World, and he flashes that smile, guys, it's a wrap. But is he going to Disney World if they win? Is it him? Is he? I think so. I don't know. I don't know if they, if they win the Super Bowl. Is he that icon right away? Or well, if he's the it, MVP. If, if it, it's, well, we don't know if he's the MVP. No, I'm saying if he not. wins that Super Bowl, it's likely not on Jimmy Garoppolo's arm. It just hasn't, it's not how they're built. It's not what they do. So if he isn't that, is it a Kittle situation? Does he get more shine, or is it Garoppolo? Guys? Well, there's an argument that could be made. If if you want to sit here and say, well, he only threw for less than 10 passes in a playoff game, then somebody who loves the 49ers would say, well, what about the game against the Saints? I yeah. mean, Jimmy Garoppolo but proved that they, he can throw if with they the win this game throwing eight passes, is he the, all of a sudden the man in the NFL and in the world? If they win this game throwing eight passes, Kyle Shanahan runs the world. Okay. I really do think that, yeah. but I don't think they will. I think Jimmy's going to chuck it. And he's going to chuck it? I don't know if there's ever been a Super Bowl MVP tight end. I, and off the top of my head, I don't know. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think it's possible. Could easily be end. one of the running backs as well. Yeah, maybe. Oster goes for well, three this, TDs this and 200 about yards. MVP. It's about winning the Super Bowl. No, but MVP is the career. face of the Super Bowl win. Like yeah. the Disney World thing, that's the Phil Simms going to, that's the face. Julian Edelman, yeah, all yeah. of that. At GMFB, with your thoughts on who it means more for, who will benefit more.